my Adore, my 64, my Commodore 64. Ahoy hoy, and welcome to a Let's Type episode from the Commodore 64 Appreciation Society. This is a series where I reach back into the past and type out a program from an old computer magazine, and then when I've finished typing it in, I play it. This series celebrates the kids who jumped headfirst into that first wave of home computers in the 80s. Back then, magazines were our lifeline. No internet, no downloads, just schoolyard tips from friends and pages from Compute, Ahoy, Byte, and so many others. They taught us how to use our machines, told us about the hot new games, and most importantly, gave us programs we could type in ourselves. It was an exciting time and one that millions of us still look back on with a smile. And a reminder that if you enjoy these type-in videos, we have a lot more. I've left a link to a playlist in the description. Today's game comes from a user request. My favorite type-in game for the C64 is Flash Flood Freddy. I think it was Ahoy. I would love to see you type that one in. Thanks for the request. Ahoy was admittedly a title that I didn't encounter too much as a kid, but I was certainly aware of it. It's an American magazine that was published by Larry Flint Publications, but with a little less skin than some of their others. And like you'd expect from those guys, Ahoy was more playful and humorous than the serious magazines like Compute. It sounds right up my alley, actually. The game itself looks fantastic, and it's always fun to explore something new, so let's do this. Flash Flood was written by Tony Brantner and was published in the November 1987 issue of Ahoy. The program listing consists of more than two full pages of hex code, which is always daunting to type in. Fortunately, Ahoy provides two programs to help keep things accurate. Bug Repellent is a proofreader for programs written in BASIC, and Flank Speed is their utility for entering hex code. So before I can type in Flash Flood, I'll need to type in these. These types of proofreading utilities became popular in the mid to late 80s. Compute had one called the Automatic Proofreader for typing in basic programs and MLX for entering machine code. Other magazines like Commodore User, Byte, and Run also use similar things from time to time. These utilities were fantastic and made debugging so much easier. Instead of waiting until you were done writing all the code to find your typos, they would give you a line-by-line -line checksum. If it matched what was in the magazine, your code was right. If it wasn't, you knew immediately that you needed to fix it. Early versions had their share of quirks though. For example, some wouldn't catch errors where you typed a command wrong but all the characters were correct. Let's say PRNIT instead of print. And sometimes extra or missing spaces could cause a problem. But by around 1985 or 86, most of those flaws had been ironed out and the proofreaders were almost perfect. Bug repellent is no different, and the version that I typed in from this issue is very sophisticated. It handles text typed in the wrong order, extra spaces, and pretty much every other common error. It really does make for easy coding and makes the whole process so much faster. Bug repellent even has an autosave feature that saves code about every 15 minutes. Of course, I still need to type this one in without the assistance of a proofreader, and I ran into my share of typos. Fortunately, they were all fairly simple, and I got it up and running without too many issues. Next up is flank speed. Fortunately, I now have bug repellent up and running, and you can see the checksums appearing in the upper left corner of the screen after I enter a line. Bug repellent caught a number of errors I made while entering the program, but I was able to fix them immediately, and I didn't run into any issues when I ran it for the first time. It just ran, which is something that never happens. Of course, this means that I don't get all the fun of troubleshooting, but I'll take this as a win. Flank speed is also quite sophisticated. Written by Gordon Wheat, it has a number of cool features for entering hex as simply as possible. For example, you don't need to worry about adding spaces or pressing return at the end of a line. It does that automatically. It also has handy options for saving work in progress so you can continue a program later. One potential issue it does have is that checksums don't consider the order of the numbers entered. In other words, the checksum is the same if I enter A010 or 10A0 on a particular line. 
This means there is still room to make some time consuming errors. But I'll take my time entering the code for flash floods so that I can avoid those. And since there's no list feature in the program, making an error like this means that I need to either find a different utility to edit the code or to retype it all in. Since I'd rather not do any of those things, I'll just be careful. So I'm about halfway through entering Flash Flood at this point and I'm making good progress. So far it's only taken me about 30 minutes and the process of entering the code has been really easy. Reading the game's description, Flash Flood appears to be an action game similar to the classic Kaboom for Atari or Diamond Drop, which is a game I typed in earlier. In these games, stuff falls from the top of the screen and you need to catch it. In this one, we take control of a guy named Smile and Sam. Sam was enjoying a peaceful day at home until a storm rolled in, at which point his roof started leaking. So Sam, equipped with a big bucket, needs to run back and forth to catch the drips. Sounds like simple and fun arcade action to me. This is actually the second game by Tony Brantner to appear in Ahoy, and also the second time he used Smile and Sam. In January 1987, they published Bug Out, where Sam is an exterminator trying to stamp out bugs. <laughs> it also looks pretty cool. I'll add it to my list to type in. I've been saving the program after every column has been entered so that I don't lose my work. Entering line after line of hex isn't as much fun as typing in basic programs, just because there's no way to understand what I'm typing in or to follow the game logic but I still enjoy it. I always put on some tunes in the background and just kind of zone out. The process is quite zen actually. It's relaxing. I think magazines like Ahoy and Compute could have charged people for therapy sessions. All right, I'm just at the very end of the code now and I'm saving the final version. Flash Flood takes up just 9 blocks on disk, or just over 2k. That's incredibly small for a game, but keep in mind that being written all in machine code makes it very compact. A basic game of approximately the same size would probably use at least 3 or 4 times more space, and of course, run way slower. Since it's all machine language, and resides at location 49152, running it requires that you type SYS 49152 instead of just run. Most commercial games operated like this as well, but would have loader programs so that players wouldn't need to worry about that detail. Hey hey, so far this looks like victory. The title screen is really cool. I love the effort that was put into the font for the title and the interface is nicely laid out. I love the little sink at the right hand side. I don't have an offhand list of the best sinks in 64 history, but this one has to be right up there. Okay, let's play. Okay, I have to pause just for a second so we can appreciate just how great that sprite design is. It's rare to see such great character graphics in a type-in game. Holy, he moves fast. The animations are really smooth and the little musical ditty that's playing is fun. I'm only about 10 seconds in here, but this game has a real professional feel to it. Uh-oh, what's going on? The water is falling right through my bucket. Oh, that's what the sink is for. <laughs> That's what I get for not reading the game instructions very closely. That's good though. I was worried that I screwed up the code. One thing I did read is that the water clears at 10,000 points. That's a lot of points. Each drop of water I catch is worth 10 multiplied by the level, so I'll need to pass at least a few more before my score starts going up fast enough. It's an interesting mechanic that balances nicely with the increased speed after each level, so as the game gets harder, the score goes up faster. Hmm, 
<clears throat> it's definitely easier to catch the water by moving into it from the side instead of trying to stop directly under it. Good to know. Also, I think the correct strategy is to empty the bucket whenever I'm near the right side of the board. <laughs> Man, I'm not very good at this. I feel like Sam is going to get a flooded basement after all. Yeah, this isn't going to go on much longer. And yeah, I think that's probably game over. Yep, yeah, there he goes. Well, that was fun. Okay, I've played a few more times now and I'm really enjoying it. Just classic arcade action. I keep flaming, or maybe that should be flooding, out at around level 7, but I'm having a good game here and I'm getting close to my 10,000 points. At these higher levels, the score starts accumulating very fast. Okay, come on. Oh, this is tight. Hey, got it, nice. Now let's just see how much longer I can go for. I love how the music keeps speeding up. Kind of reminds me of the building music in Aztec Challenge. It's great for adding that extra bit of tension that I don't really need, by the way. It's basically impossible to get drips that fall on the far side of the screen now. The score is really going up quickly now. I think I should be able to hit 20,000 and clear the level again. <laughs> I keep forgetting to empty the water bucket. Hey, sweet. so close. The magazine says that the game goes to level 20, and I'm sure I would have done it, um, but I'll leave that for another time. This game is a lot of fun. It's probably the most enjoyable one that I've typed in so far, and also the one that's closest to the type of game that would have been a commercial release. Tony Brantner did a fantastic job with the code on this one, and I'm looking forward to typing in his other game. Also, thanks to CB Meeks for the request. I really enjoyed typing it in and getting introduced to Ahoy. I will definitely be adding more games from their collection and I'm looking forward to checking out the magazine in general. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. And if you have any experiences with Ahoy Magazine, Flash Flood, or even floods in general, <laughs> I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Hope to see you again.